with some more super science projects you can do right from your own home. This week on our fifth grade Google Classroom, we're studying the spheres of the Earth, the atmosphere, the geosphere, the biosphere, and the hydrosphere. Today we're going to be focusing on the hydrosphere. Now, the word hydro in hydrosphere comes from the Greek word meaning water. Now, the hydrosphere um, includes all of our planet's water, all the way from the salt water in our oceans to the fresh water in our lakes and rivers. It even includes water collected deep underground, the water frozen in glaciers at the North Pole and the South Pole, and it includes water vapor that evaporates into the air, the rain, the snow, and sleet that we get um, as weather. Earlier this year, we learned that water is matter, and water has the ability to change its state when heat is either applied or taken away. For example, we have li a liquid, water in its liquid form. Uh, this is the stuff you drink when you're really hot, it's a hot summer's day, you're playing sports, Please make sure you guys are staying hydrated. Remember to drink your water. Next, we have water in its frozen state or its solid state, which is ice and it's really cold. Ow. Okay, anyways, it's not that cold. I was being dramatic. Anyways, moving on, we have water in its gas form. As you, if you can see it, there's steam coming out of the top of the cup because this is boiled water. So I'm being very careful when I'm holding it. Um, the steam is rising and that's the water vapor. That's water in its gas form. We don't always see water vapor. In this case we are because it's boiled water. But if it's a puddle or um, you're seeing water or you're trying to look for water vapor coming out of a pond or a stream, it's not always this easy to notice. Water can change its state of matter through a process called the water cycle. Um, the water cycle is the way in which water moves throughout our planet, whether it's in the air, on the surface, or underground. Now, the four main parts of the water cycle we're gonna focus on today are evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. Evaporation is when the sun heats up the water on the Earth's surface, and the water vapor rises to the sky. Once it's made its way up into the sky, it cools down and forms water droplets. And after a while, those water droplets get really heavy. And when they get really heavy, they fall to the ground and what's called precipitation. And you might know precipitation as rain, snow, which we really didn't get a lot of this year, um, sleet or hail. And that water falls back down to the Earth's surface, where it accumulates or collects in streams, rivers, lakes, ponds, the ocean, your pool in your backyard. Um, it can also soak into the ground and become groundwater. And once it's there, the whole cycle starts over again. The water gets heat, um, heated up by the sun. The water vapor travels and cools off once it gets in the sky collect, um, condenses into water droplets, and once they get too heavy, they fall back to the Earth's surface. Now we're going to, um, we're going to observe that for ourselves today in, a, in an investigation I like to call water cycle in a bag. So what you're going to need for this is a Ziploc baggie, some water, good old food coloring, a spoon, Tape, any tape you can find in the house. Um, for me, it's Gorilla Tape today. And then you're going to also want um, some Sharpies. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate my Ziploc bag. All right, boys and girls, now that I have all of my materials set up and we're ready to go, the first thing I said I was gonna do was decorate my bag. Now I'm gonna begin by drawing a sun because without the sun, we wouldn't have evaporation. So I'm gonna make my sun. Okay, I'm gonna give my son some, some sunglasses. That way, a little smile smirk. That way he can look like a cool dude. Next, make some fluffy clouds. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. And the most, the star of the show, the water. I'm gonna make some rolling waves in the ocean. I'm gonna go right across here. And I'm gonna make some down here. And last but not least, off in the distance in the background, we're gonna create some mountains. Some nice mountains that stand tall and proud. And you do that by drawing two sides of a triangle. And I'm adding a little bit of snow to mine. One more. So there we go. We have a little bit of landscape, some beautiful vistas. Um, so my last step is to label each part of the water cycle. And I'm going to do that using, hmm, I'm going to use the red marker. So I'm using Sharpies because Sharpies, um, they stick better. They don't run. Magic markers are going to run. You can use regular pen. Just be careful you don't press too hard and pierce the bags, then the water will leak out. All right. So for our first um, part of the water cycle is e it's evaporation. So I'm going to write that in evaporation. I'm going to draw some arrows pointing up indicating that the water vapor is rising. Now the next um, part of the water cycle is condensation and that is when, hang on one second, and that is when the water vapor that rises cools and forms water droplets. Now when those water droplets get a little too heavy, they fall to the ground. I'm drawing in some rain. You want to get creative you could do some snowflakes okay so some rain and that rain is going to fall in what we call precipitation and i'm going to draw some arrows pointing down and the last part we talked about today was collection or accumulation and when that rain falls it accumulates in rivers that run off into the ocean so I'm going to write it right here, uh, accumulation. It's not in red, but I think it looks very nice. So now that we have our water cycle bag decorated and labeled, what we're going to do is prepare our water. So you're going to take your cup of water. I'm going to choose blue. You can choose whatever color you want. Um, or whatever color you have available. Or if you don't have color, you don't need it. That's the best part of this. Um, I'm going to just mix it up and tap my spoon off right here. That way it doesn't drip on the table. And then I'm gonna very carefully pour it into my Ziploc bag. You don't wanna use too much water. I used about a half of a cup. What you want to, uh, you don't, we're gonna hang this with the Gorilla the gorilla tape on the window. So if it's too heavy, it will fall down and um, you'll have food coloring all over your floor perhaps. And that won't be too good. So make sure you only put maybe a half of a cup of water if you're using a small bag, small Ziploc baggie, the ones that are half the size of this, I would use a fourth of a cup. We're gonna take a piece of tape, make mine a little bit bigger. And we are going to go and hang this on the window. All right, so you wanna find a sunny spot. This is the sunniest spot right now in um, my house. And what you're gonna do, I already have one here because I tried this yesterday and I can already see water vapor forming on the side of the bags. So I'm gonna take my bag and I'm just gonna carefully hang it here. And what you want to do is uh, wait a while. It's not going to happen right away. It's probably going to take maybe a couple of hours or so. And you're going to just observe the top of the bag and what do you see? Do you see little droplets forming? I see the blue because I allowed some of it to get on the top. But take a look at the other water droplets that form and what color they are. Um, are they still this very dark, pretty color blue or are they clear? Um, once you find out, you can drop your answers in the comments below, or you can email them to me. But that is water cycle in a bag. 
um, a nice, easy, fun project you can do at home. And it goes along with our unit on Google Classroom, which my fifth graders, if you have not signed up for Google Classroom yet, please email me so I can send you the access code. Um, other than that, I really enjoyed my time with you today. I had a lot of fun showing you how to do water cycle in a bag. I hope you have a lot of fun with it too. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day today, so make sure you get outside for a walk, maybe play with your siblings or spend some time with your family outside. Um, I miss you guys a lot. Have an awesome day.